They don't put glasses on the snowman. Oh, he's he's lit. When it's Christmas time, I light up a fire, gather friends and family. Have a bite to eat and some Christmas sweets Chilling out and watch TV Wrapping up the gifts with my fingertips Making up some fancy rhymes oh, so fancy. Just got something fun for my special one But my love don't cost Alright you guys We are on our way <clears throat> Today I got on my big orange jacket. Well, because I hope you are sticking down. I hate when it's poking up because it just, just to me is stupid. But you guys know that. You know, I have a, a bit of an issue with this little camera. But hey, you know, we're out here today. We missed yesterday, which is okay. That's fine. Yesterday morning, um, the sun rise was like fire i took a video of it but the video just didn't do it justice it did not do it justice at all <coughs> basically um around the edges of the um of the mountains you know around the top of the mountains I could see the sun coming up and uh, like I said it was like fire and then well that was about 4, 4 a.m. 5 a.m. somewhere around there I didn't look at the clock but after the sun rose, well, don't ask me what I was doing up that early, which got something to do with why I didn't walk. But I ended up, um, you know, um, falling asleep because it was so early in the morning. And, uh, uh, Sorry, I'm just watching my surroundings. That's all. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> ended up falling asleep. <clears throat> and my curtains were still open. So I could see... Uh-oh, here comes a loud car. Oh, no, maybe he's going the other way. <laughs> anyway, so yeah... <clears throat> Um, I ended up falling asleep, uh, you know, maybe four or five o'clock, like I said, and, uh, when I woke up, there was no sun whatsoever. It never came out yesterday at all. So I'm not sure what that was all about, but we didn't get, uh, any sun yesterday so we should get some today it is cold out here and again this morning when I woke up it was 4 30 so uh, you know like I said that's early for me I don't usually wake up until about five uh, 
is something that I've been uh, practicing to incorporate in my daily activities. Uh, again, with uh, the YouTube, <laughs> I got the idea or the suggestion from a YouTuber. Um, actually, you know, this guy, he's, uh, when I first started watching the video, uh, you know, he looked like he was about, I don't know, 15 or 16 years old. You know, like a youngster. So he's, you know, telling his story about this waking up at 5 a.m. every morning. It was a challenge, actually. I think he was doing it for maybe two weeks or a month or 30 days. I don't know. So uh, what he was saying was that, you know, waking up at this time of morning gave him a feeling of more being accomplished throughout the day. So, you know, I'm listening to him talk and everything. He's giving all this good advice. And then he goes, uh, and I was telling my wife, Sarah, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I had to pause the video, honey. I was like, your wife? How old are you? <laughs> because he was making it seem like he and his wife had been together for a minute. You know, not like no six months ago. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was very interesting. And uh, I think <laughs> one of the things that really made me sit up and look at him was the fact, well, look at him, but pay attention to, you know, what he had to say, was the fact that, uh, that, you know, he said he was a married man, and he looked like a teenager, and I'm like, okay, if that's what waking up at 5 a.m. will do for you, I'm all in, so... I've been getting up at 5 a.m., which um, actually is probably um, how I am prompted to do so much more, um, you know, in my apartment. Because before, you know, I was only, um, I got to pay attention to the time, too. I forgot. I, I have something coming today. So I want to make sure that I get back in, you know, before, uh, before the deed happens. <laughs> yeah, so by getting up at 5 a.m., um, you know, I really didn't have a plan as to, uh, you know, what I was going to do. All I knew was at 5 a.m. I'm going to wake up. And so that's what I've been doing. And, uh, well, when I first started, I would just wake up and, and watch TV. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I would do. Wake up and watch TV. But now, and that was only for about a week or two. Maybe two weeks. I'd say about one and a half to two weeks. And, uh, oh, pardon me. And, uh, so... Then uh, one morning, I got up. It was, uh, well, you know, it was just the same old shit on TV. And if it wasn't the same crap that I watched on TV, it was recordings of the same crap that I watched on TV. 
so uh, I thought it's almost so I'm gonna stop up here at this uh, at this entrance here. Anyway, so oh my nose. So um, I um, you know I. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought. This man's come walking like he gonna do something to somebody. So <laughs> that's not the way I want to go, is it? I don't know. I'll tell you what. No, I don't think I think you wanna. I'm going to go on up this hill. Um, yeah, okay, so about one and a half to two weeks. And I decided one morning, I was like, well, I'm going to start doing, you know, some of that minimalist stuff everybody's talking about. Well, not everybody, but, you know, it's something that I wanted to consider, getting rid of clutter, decluttering. So, uh, I ended up uh, cleaning out my closet. The top shelf, <laughs> not the whole thing. So, um, that's done, and the next day, which is about, you know, five o'clock in the morning, and I decided to, uh, I've never heard a dog bark over here before. I was trying to go real fast up this hill, guys. And uh, I lost my train of thought because I was trying to catch my breath. Yeah, you just stay behind that door there. They don't used to bark. That's kind of weird. I guess because they used to cars coming by here. I don't know. I'm not used to hearing somebody talking, that's for sure. But I'm way on the other side of the street. So, the next day, I went ahead and started on another project which was um which was uh my uh computer stand i guess you could call it a computer stand i guess you could call it a computer stand but uh i don't well i do keep a computer on it but it's not the computer that i'd normally use anyway so, I, uh, I hope this thing's not wrapping up against the camera. You guys know I have a thing about this camera. I'm mean, one of these days I'm going to quit talking about it and just suck it up and deal with it. Um, I started watching... Survivor. Now, Survivor is not a show that really interested me when when I would hear about it. Um, you know, on the television, or you know, they advertise. You know, coming new episode 
tonight at eight or whatever. And so, uh, and so <laughs> I'm having a hard time. I just, yeah, I know how I get, okay. So, shit, wait a minute now. You know, I get, I be wanting to know what's going on around me. And that's not my anxiety. That's just common sense. So, anyway, there's something coming up here that's making a lot of noise. It's a motorcycle. And, girl, here he comes. And he's going super fast. Look at him. Somebody whose vehicle makes that kind of sound, you think they would basically try to keep a low profile? I would. Um, I had a car that used to fart. <laughs> it was an old, old Mercedes. And, well, you know, I should have known something when my husband brought me this car. I was married to Brittany's father at the time. And so his cousin, okay, his aunt, I guess it's his cousin's mom. <laughs> anyway, um, she uh, gave him this car, this, this old raggedy 1968 Mercedes. And it was an old one too, real old. And um, it's, you know, one of those ones where, you know, they put the Amazon on top of the car. It's not, you know, nowadays, the cars don't have any kind of an emblem on the front of the hood, on top of the hood, if you will. All of the cars, you know, the emblems are, are made into the car. But at this time, Mercedes Benz, um, you know, they were putting the emblems on top of the car. Um, in fact, I think they still do. I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, I, cars, come on now. Anyway, so, um, so this car is a 1968, and the license plate, which I wanted to have changed, said Tite. T-I-T-A-E. And they were trying to convince me that Tite was a nickname for the, you know, the woman who owned the car, Tite. Well, when I was growing up, Men referred to women's breasts as tite. You know, get some tite, you know. So I didn't like that at all. Anyway, so Brittany's father says, oh, yeah, you can change the, you can change the, uh, the license plate because he had this thing about every time he would get a new car, he wanted to, change the license plate. Oh shit, here's a bunch of goddamn dogs. I can't stand them. I can't stand them at all, honey. So I'm gonna go over here and stay out of his way. Right up in here. And I won't have to worry about his ass no smoke. Anyway, so they got this license plate that says Tite, and what happened was, like, you'd be driving the car down the street, and I don't know if it was, if you, like, release, good morning, beautiful dogs, 
you'd be driving down the street and I don't know if it's because you release the gas or if you um, put your foot on the brake or take your foot off the brake, uh, whichever action I did would make the car go and it would do that every time. Now, at this time, Brittany was, you know, three or four months old, something like that. And so, you know, we'd be driving along, she'd be in the back seat, naturally, in her car seat, and I would be in the front. Well, at the time, that was the law. That's how you had to ride. And so, uh, so, you know, we'd be driving along and the car would just be farting and just all these farting noises. Anyway, so, you know, I told Pierre, this is embarrassing, driving down the street in his car, and it's farting all the time. He's like, oh, it's all right, it's all right. I'm going to get that fixed. I'm going to get that fixed. All right. So one, one evening, I go to get Brittany from her babysitter and you no, know, I, I went from from work yeah from work to the babysitter and then from the babysitter we were going to go home <laughs> well at the time um, where I worked was in Hawthorne where I lived was in Los Angeles so I would have to drive from Hawthorne to Los Angeles. And, oh my God, this particular evening, it was raining. So I, you know, just all I wanted to do was get my baby home in the rain. And I also remember that it was around this time of year, meaning that it was dark at five o'clock in the evening. It was dark. I, you know, I wear glasses. So look at this tree. Can you guys see this tree right here? It's the one right in front of me, the vibrant red. Oh, wow, isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh, <laughs> had to stop and tell you that. Anyway, so, um, we get in, I get in the car seat, um, and it, it hasn't started like pouring, right? It's just these little drops. And uh, I get in the car seat, I jump in the car, we're rolling. And then the rain starts to come down. As the rain is coming down, I switch on the windshield wipers so yeah I'm waiting for the windshield wipers to get started and nothing's happening so I, I, I clicked it you know I'm clicking the button I'm clicking I'm clicking clicking so once I clicked I guess I'm clicking it so much that one time it picked up so it wiped the uh, wiped the shield but the wipers just went to one side and that was it. So then I click, 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 click. Again, then it went to the other side. So I was like, oh my God, is this the way I have to drive? With my hand on the clicker and hope that one day, one of these times when I click it, it will click. I keep hearing these dogs barking and it's got me on high alert right now. High fucking alert. So, all right, guys. Long story short, the car was a piece of junk. The windshield wipers didn't work. The car was farting all over the place. And it had a nasty name license plate. 
and pretty much those are the kinds of cars that I would be blessed with. Which, I'm not complaining because for the most part, I always had transportation to get where I needed to go. And that's not the bus. That was Brittany's father, always keeping me in a ride, always. In fact, he's trying to put me in one now. <laughs> But, you know, I've had enough. I've had enough of the responsibilities of owning a used car. I've never had a new car in my life. Every car I've ever had or owned was used and not in the best of shape. Well, I did have a Ford Aspire. It was used, but, but um, I ended up losing that car. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I'm a little tired. I'm going here and sit down. See you in the next video. Bye.